Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So the case that I have for you guys today is a bit of a shorter one, but it is such a bizarre case that really has just stumped me. I will say that it's a little bit frustrating because there isn't a ton of reporting on this case and there's a lot of gaps in time where we really have absolutely no idea what happened and a lot of sources reported things a little bit differently. So it was a little bit difficult to piece together this video, but I did my best to gather all of the most detailed and accurate information that I could possibly find in this case. I will also be asking a lot of different questions throughout to kind of get your mind wandering on all of the information that we are missing that could be really helpful to this case. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. Today, we are going to be discussing the case of Rohan Stefan Brown. Rohan Brown and his mother, Grace Skinner, immigrated to the U.S. from Jamaica to Poughkeepsie, New York, where his grandparents lived when he was seven years old. He was described as being optimistic, charming, and full of life. He was always smiling and joking around with everyone around him. He had such a good sense of humor and just got along with everyone. He loved soccer and always would listen to the Martin Luther King Jr. speeches and his favorite quote was, life is 10% what happens and 90% how you react. Those who knew him growing up said that Rohan always took on the big brother role and wanted to teach young people based on his own path in life. He was just overall a really good person who just loved to make you laugh. Now, in the summer of 2008, 26 year old Rahan had been off of school for this summer and was getting ready to complete his senior year at the State University at Albany, New York. There, he was studying and working very hard, working towards his goal of becoming a lawyer. However, shortly before his disappearance, Rohan's mother said that he started to act a little bit differently. He just was not acting himself. She knew that something had to have been bothering him, but he wouldn't tell her or his stepdad or any of his friends exactly what it was. Grace said that her, Rahan's stepdad, and him were all very close, but at the end of the day, there were just certain things that he didn't want to tell either of them because he was afraid that they would worry. Grace said that as he had gotten his car all packed up and was ready to head back to school, his demeanor just suddenly changed. She could just tell that he was withdrawing. He was normally such a lively, outgoing guy, but suddenly he just started going into his room alone and shutting the door and didn't want to talk to anyone and wasn't eating as much as normal. She knew that whatever it was that was bothering him was very deep and grim, but she had no idea what it could be. She thought at this point that maybe he had just had an argument that ended badly. Then some of Rohan's friends mentioned that they thought that Rohan was worried about people who were after him who wanted to harm him. Now, on August 6, 2008, Rohan was driving when police started following him and and tried to pull him over for what they say was a routine traffic stop. But Rahan sped away from them and they lost his trail. Then the next day on August 7th, Rahan was pulled over by police again, this time in New Paltz, for driving erratically. This was the last known sighting of Rahan. He was supposed to start his classes back up that fall, but Weeks went by and he was not attending any of his classes. Now, I didn't exactly see anywhere when exactly people noticed when Rahan went missing or when he was reported missing. It seemed like there is a big gap in time between when he was last seen and when we find out any other information. What we do know is that Rohan, or at least Rohan's car, did make it back to the State University at Albany's campus. On December 16th, 2008, Rahan's 2001 blue four-door Hyundai Accent sedan was seen on the SUNY campus. When it was found, a SUNY police officer cited the car for a violation, but as far as I've seen in my research, it was unclear whether or not he was in the car at the time. I'm also not sure if his car was packed up or if it was unpacked. I also don't know if, you know, all these articles saying it was unclear if he was in the car because that was pretty much the exact wording that they used. I don't know if this means that it was packed up and looked like someone was sleeping in it and maybe they just didn't check, or if they just mean that it hadn't been reported by anyone whether or not he was seen. I believe that since it wasn't mentioned anywhere, he probably was not anywhere near the car. 
I think it just means that the police officer did not write it down in his report whether or not Rahan was in the car, so I don't think that he was. I will also mention that whatever surveillance they had around the area was not working at the time, of course, so there was no way to go back and check that video. Also around the time that this car was found, the university police department's computer system had actually crashed, which delayed the investigation. This could also mean that maybe the date was entered wrong on the computer for when the car was found. Maybe the car was found some other time and it's just reported this way because it was entered into the computer wrong because again, the computer system crashed so there's really no way of knowing. That is just something to keep in mind as we go through this case because again, there was such a huge gap in time where we don't know anything that happened. Now, we do know that he did not take his passport, his driver's license, or his diploma wherever he was, and he hadn't yet registered his car, which he was supposed to do by February of 2009. I also saw in one source that he left behind a note saying that he thought people were after him, but I don't know how credible this is since I did only see it in one source and I didn't see it mentioned anywhere else. His mother also noted that around the time that he was last seen, he did not have a lot of money and he hadn't taken many of his clothes with him. He left as if he was going out for a night, not like he was going out and planning to be gone for a long period of time. Months passed and turns out that Rahan had not attended any of his classes that entire semester and also had not shown up to his dorm room the entire semester, so he was dropped by administration from the school. At this point, once again, there are even more gaps in the timeline. I saw some articles that discussed an investigation after the car was found on campus, but I didn't see any specifics. So I really don't know the school or police's thought at that point. I don't know if they just assumed that he was skipping or if they ever truly looked into his case as a missing persons case. His mother knew the entire time that something was off because again, the two were very close and there was no way that he would have just not called his mother for so many months. I also saw her mention in an interview that they did have an investigation going, but again, I don't know how thorough it was. I didn't hear any details about the investigation. I literally only saw that it was mentioned that an investigation had been going on. Really, we don't know anything else about this case until 12 years later. In July of this year, 2020, the New York State Police divers were conducting a sonar training in the Hudson River in Poughkeepsie when they discovered a blue Hyundai four-door sedan submerged in the water about 25 feet deep, about 75 feet away from the shore. They removed this car from the water and transported onto a truck to be securely moved to a safe location. Upon a Examining the car, the Dutchess County Medical Examiner actually found human remains inside and the car did match to Rohan's. After the discovery of the car, Grace said that she had received a call from the police and she thought that this was going to be the moment that she'd be finally receiving some good news after a decade of waiting. However, police had actually just asked her for Rohan's dentist so they could pull up his dental records to check if the human remains found did belong to her son. And by August of 2020, the medical examiner did match the remains found to Rahan Brown. So this left people with so many questions. They wanted to know why police hadn't found this car earlier, especially given that the Hudson River had been searched two times just this year beforehand. On January 30th, 2020, the river had been searched for a weapon connected to a murder in Newburgh. It was searched again on May 10th, this time having multiple agencies searching for an 18-year-old who went missing after a swim, I presume, in this river. Plus, you have to think about the fact that he went missing 12 years ago. I couldn't find an exact number of how many times the Hudson River had been searched over the years, but it's the Hudson River. It's probably been searched several times without finding the car somehow. So then it makes me wonder, how long was the car in the river? How long had Rahan's body been in the river? I couldn't find anywhere any report that had stated how decomposed he was or how rusted the car was. I imagine during investigations like this, they can probably find out pretty easily how long the car had been sitting there and I feel like they would know how long the human remains had been sitting there and 
that can tell us a lot about what actually happened. The other thing that my mind jumps to is the fact that they didn't immediately notice a body or a skeleton inside the car when it was discovered. From what I gathered from the articles that I read, it seemed like they found the car, took it out of water, and then brought it out to be examined, and that's when they found the human remains. I feel like if it was a full body or a full skeleton, they probably would have noticed it right away. So that tells me that Rahan's remains were probably very decomposed and they were all broken apart and found in places like under the seat or in crevices like that. So this tells me that his body was probably in that river in the car for a very long time. The family, understandably, is very frustrated with this entire thing. The fact that police hadn't found the car for so many years made them think that police just were not trying to find him. Grace appealed to the public asking anyone with information to at least call in anonymously because Rahan is her only son and she just needs some closure. So now I want to get into some of the possible theories in this case. There seems to be two main ideas that people have talked about the most. So the first, of course, is that Rahan had some bad people who were after him. Now, I don't know a lot about his past, whether he had been into drugs ever, whether he had friends who were involved in that scene, or if he had just recently gotten into any fights with anyone that he knew. Or maybe this has something to do with a girl. Maybe he had started talking to a girl who had a very jealous boyfriend that he didn't know about. There are literally so many possibilities in terms of who could have wanted to harm him because we just don't know much. I am totally speculating when I say these things and I'm just going off of the fact that this is a young man in college. It is very common for a lot of people in college to get involved in drugs or alcohol and sometimes it can even get to the point of it being dangerous if you piss the wrong people off. It's possible that he may have owed money to someone or even just generally got involved in the wrong crowd. And the only reason I even bring up the girl thing is because again, it's very common for college students to kind of get with each other and he very well could have met a girl at some point in college and again had a jealous boyfriend or something like that. We really don't know anything and this is all just pure speculation but no matter what the situation might be we really have to consider the timeline. Before he went missing we know that he expressed that he was afraid of people who were coming after him and wouldn't tell anyone why. That may mean that he didn't want those around him knowing what he was involved with. He also was seen driving around before he was last seen. His car was seen on campus months after he was last seen, but he never attended classes or went to his dorm or was seen by any witnesses on campus between those time periods as far as I know. And that was in Albany. Then his car is found with his body in it 12 years later in Capixie. So it's definitely possible that he was harmed sometime after he was pulled over and then whoever was responsible went and hid his body somewhere, stored it somewhere, and then parked his car on campus to make it look like he was still alive and well and going to class. And then this person could have later took this car and then moved his body into the car and then dumped both into the Hudson River, which is probably a much safer hiding spot than burying a body. That is all totally possible in my opinion. The other theory, which is the more commonly discussed theory, is that he was suffering from some sort of mental health problems and was paranoid and disappeared because of that. Now, initially when he went missing, he was reported as someone who was missing, who was in danger due to a mental health crisis. So that is what the initial thought was. Now, I don't know if there was any actual documented reason why that was believed. I haven't seen anywhere stated that he had any sort of diagnosed mental health condition. And in many of the articles and interviews that I've seen with Grace, she doesn't mention any sort of mental health issues either. So I'm not totally sure, but Grace was very, very frustrated with how police handled his case and stated several times that she did not believe that he would just go off and never come back like that without contacting her. So from this, I feel like a reason why maybe police did not investigate this as thoroughly as they should have could be because they just assumed that he was going through some sort of mental health episode and then assumed that he'd be back eventually. Again, it's just speculation. I have no idea if police investigated it or how hard they investigated it. It's just 
speculation because again there's such a huge gap in time that we don't know anything that happened so because of that and obviously the fact that grace had stated herself that police were not doing enough i do think that it's very possible so going along with this theory it has been speculated that maybe he had some sort of schizophrenia or some disorder that distorted his thinking and made him very paranoid it did seem like he just snapped and that his personality changed out of nowhere so that could be the reason why. A lot of times people with the gene for schizophrenia won't express any symptoms until their mid-20s after some sort of big life event happens, such as someone dying or being incredibly stressed at work or school, or even positive stressful things like graduating or having a child. Some people with the gene go their whole lives without ever getting the symptoms. So to me, it would be nice to know if something big happened in his life shortly before for this that may have caused the disorder to appear when it did. Either way, when it comes to this theory, it's possible that he had been experiencing some sort of paranoia, felt like he was being followed, and that people were after him, and maybe that's why he was driving erratically. I also saw in a Reddit thread that I went through, which is linked down below for you guys to read if you're curious, um, I saw some people that said that oftentimes the first sign of schizophrenia is driving erratically. Then maybe once he got to school, he either fell into some sort of depressive episode and just lived in his car and didn't attend classes and didn't go to his dorm or something like that. And then he had just been off somewhere else when his car was found and it just so happened that it got ticketed and seen when it did. And again, I want to mention that it's possible that the dates for when the car could have been seen have been wrong because the system was down. Then maybe at some point after his car was found, he drove himself into the river, again, because of some sort of mental break, and that's where he's been for the past 12 years. I will say that for someone who is suffering from a very, very severe mental illness, especially these really intense ones like schizophrenia, something as small as getting a ticket can make them feel like everyone is out to get them and that their speculations are confirmed, that everyone just wants what's worse for them, and that is something that could tip them over the edge. So I do think that this theory is possible, but I also feel like if this car was found at a different date and was just entered wrong, that the officer who found it probably would have noticed that the car was found in a different month like August, not December, if that makes sense. Like, even if they can't remember the exact date of when the car was found, I imagine that they would have remembered the general time that the car was found, so even if it was found in October or November and that just got mixed up, that's still a while after he was known to have been heading to campus. The weather in August and December are vastly different, and I don't know if it's just me, but when I recall memories, I feel like most people at least remember what the weather was like, like on a graduation or even something smaller like, oh yeah, I was walking this one day and it was August and it was nice out or it was raining. So again, I feel like it would be really difficult to mix up August with December. So I honestly don't know if I think that it's just a case of dates being entered wrong because I just don't know how far off that would have caused it to be unless he entered the date correctly and then the system crashed and then for some reason it changed it and no one noticed. I don't know. Because if we're going off of the date that's been reported, where was he this entire time? Had he been living in his car and if he was, how did no one notice until months later? And if he was living in his car, where did he park it? Did he just park it on random side streets or did he actually stay at campus or was he going from place to place so that no one would find him? Or maybe he was staying with a friend and if he was staying with a friend, why hadn't they come forward? That huge gap in time makes me question this theory a lot because again, what was he doing this entire time and why did he just randomly decide to drive off when he did? I don't know. That's weird to me. I am looking forward to seeing what you guys think because that just does not make sense in my head whatsoever. So those are the two main theories and to me, both do seem possible. With how little information we have, it's honestly very, very difficult to decide what we think seems most likely. I also want to add that investigators have come out after finding the car and said that they don't believe that foul play was involved, but they are still considering this an open investigation. So everything right now does point to the mental health theory, but we also don't know because we 
don't know how badly he was decomposed, but it was probably a lot. So it was probably very difficult or impossible to determine a cause of death. And we've seen in a lot of other cases where police just assumed that someone ran off only to turn out that they were actually harmed. But again, we really don't know a lot. And I imagine that police probably have more information pointing towards this theory that they just have not made public, but we don't know for sure. We don't know what they have that they haven't released to us. So there might be something pointing directly towards this or maybe they're just making that assumption. We really don't know. I personally think that with what we do know, I think it was more likely that he was harmed. I think he was harmed right after he made it to college and then again his body was kept somewhere and then the car was parked as a distraction. It's possible that this person didn't even think about the fact that classes might be taking attendance and would know that he's not going. This person may have just been thinking his car is there so of course people will think he's in school. People don't always consider every single detail when thinking things like this through. I just think that if he was going through something and was just living his life or was even hiding out somewhere that he would have contacted at least someone or at the very least been seen by someone. People with schizophrenia oftentimes believe that everyone around them is out to get them. So even if he assumed that all of his friends and family were secretly against him and that's why he didn't contact them, I still feel like there would have been some people who would have seen him somewhere if he'd been living around for all of these months. The only thing in my opinion that could really make this theory of him taking his own life possible is if he drove his car off onto the river right away and that the dates of when his car was seen on campus were just mixed up. I don't know, there are so many weird and bizarre aspects to this case that make it very difficult to come up with any sort of plausible explanation. So that is pretty much all of the information that I have for today's case. Grace has been Rahan's biggest advocate through all of this and she does not believe that police have done enough to fully investigate her son's death. He has so many people in his life who loved him and are desperate to find out the truth. It was honestly really cool to see how many articles were written solely about all the good things that people have to say about him. I read through so many statements from so many different people just talking about what kind of person he was and how amazing he was. He is missed by so many and he has an army behind him fighting for justice. There has been a GoFundMe set up to help Grace raise money in order to help cover the cost to hire a board certified forensic pathologist and investigations. They are absolutely nowhere near their goal, so I would really appreciate if all of you went and donated whatever you can. Even one dollar can make a huge difference if enough people do it. So again, I highly encourage you to go ahead and check out their GoFundMe, which will be linked down in the description box below. I wanted to cover Rahan's case today mainly because of how little coverage there is on it. No, he's not a missing person anymore, but his case definitely needs more attention and more awareness to get some movement in figuring out what happened and to show those investigating the case that yes, people still care about this young man's life. So please, like I always say in these videos, please make sure to do whatever you can to share Rahan's story, whether it be by sharing this video or any of the articles that I have listed down below under the sources. So that is all I have for today's video. Again, thank you for listening to Rahan's story. And now I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that foul play was involved or do you think something else is at play? please let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.